Champion. Kelly Howard, the first batter of the ball game, the second baseman of the Bruins. Rounded to second base, Krista Gomez retires the first batter, Kelly Howard. Kelly Howard, a different leadoff hitter for the UCLA Bruins. Usually it will be this girl, Kathy Evans, the number two batter, but Howard, the freshman, hits for power, and she can slap. Kathy Evans, watch for her just to slap it. Watch for her to look for Jenny Dalton, who is a freshman, also making her first appearance at shortstop for Arizona. Evans was the Bruins' leadoff batter last year as a freshman player. Take strike one from Susie Parra. Now, She's the kind of player that can really break down defenses, can't you? She tries to win. Her slap is on. She's hitting it in the ground. We've seen her pop up a couple in this College World Series. Lays off the rise ball. And that's, that's exactly one one. what Susie Parra is trying to get her to do by throwing her the rise. She's either going to try and throw low and away so she slaps to the shortstop, try and handcuff her inside, or get her to pop it up. The bun in front of the plate. And a good, strong throw by that fine catcher, Jody Pruitt, gets Kathy Evans two away. But already UCLA is putting the ball in play and making Arizona make the plays. As we had mentioned before, how quick Kathy Evans is. We timed her. It takes her less than three seconds on average, about 2.5 seconds to get all the way down the line. Arizona needs to be flawless in their defense. They did make it on that play. But Randy, as we've seen in this College World Series, Arizona, quite a bit of errors. Jody Pruitt, terrific catcher. She'll have to make the right calls to Lisa Fernandez. You got to pitch very carefully to this All-American. On the ground to the shortstop, Jenny Dalton. And the Bruins go quietly in the first. One, two, three. Arizona's coming to the plate. We're scoreless at Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Randy, we mentioned Arizona has about five lefties in their lineup which can slap, hit for power, or bunt. And watch Shellevold, one of the leading hitters on the team in the regular season and in this College World Series, to try and slap to Christy or Kelly Howard. Shellevold hitting 385 in her sophomore year. That's a foul ball played by Victoria but on the wrong side of the line for the Wildcats. And Lisa Fernandez, a smart pitcher, anticipating what Shellevold is going to do, so she's trying to give her nuts something she can handle very well. Slappers like pitches below the waist. She'll try and give her rise balls or something low and away. She's got to reach for as she's running out of the box. Shellevold was great here last year. She had eight hits. She was on the all-college World Series team, laid off the rise ball. Two and one to Amy Shellevold. And we'll look at the defense for the, Ari the UCLA Bruins, how close they're playing. The most notably, shortstop in third, really in, trying to cut down the distance. To the shortstop, Howard, a bad throw. Shellevold, the wide turn, but you'll hold at first base. Shellevold had three hits against UCLA in the title tilt a year ago, but this time she gets on board via the error. And exactly as we talked about it. Christy Howard was already cheating inside and she needs to make a clean pickup and a clean throw. Well, she made the clean pickup, but she doesn't make the clean throw. Thro throws off her front foot. Joanne Alchin could not handle it. So Amy Chelvold, a speedster, is on first for the Arizona Wildcats. Hagan twice an All-American for the Cats. Looks at strike one. Lisa Fernandez, four and one in the World Series. A no-hitter against Cal State Northridge, the number two ranked team in the country, and also Connecticut, and she one hit southwestern Louisiana. Jamie Hagan's been pretty quiet for the Arizona Wildcats, just hitting, having two hits and 13 at bats, 154 in this College World Series. When a player's in a slump like that, have her slap, have her sacrifice, just have her move the runner. And this is the good discipline by the Arizona Wildcats, something we didn't see last year. They are more disciplined at laying off the rise ball. Mike Candrea says we've got to put the ball on the ground and get the short game going. Mike Candrea, his team is 43-8. and eight. This is his eighth year. And he's brought him to the World Series the last six seasons. <laughs> Shellevold laid off that one. She has a very good eye, as does Hagen. And we've seen the two tough front hitters lay off pitches that a lot of batters have been chasing in this series. As I mentioned, the discipline, Randy, Lisa Fernandez has showed them a rise. They laid off. She's showing them an out curve. They laid off. They're waiting for their pitch. Very good batting for the top two batters for Arizona. 
Fernandez will field it. A tough play. A good throw gets Hagen on the play. Shellevold is at second base. That is what happens when you have also an All-American fielder for a pitcher. Lisa Fernandez adds another dimension to the UCLA Bruins, probably because they're the number one defense in the nation. But watch Hagen, the slapping bunt, and Lisa Fernandez, a great job of coming off the mound, cutting it off in front of Christy Howard, gunning it, and making the throw. Undoubtedly, the best player in women's college softball the past four years. Leo O'Brien, fine freshman for the Wildcats. Hitting 372 on the season. Strike one from Lisa Fernandez. And Lisa Fernandez, we are looking certainly at a future Hall of Famer at Hall of Fame Stadium. 11 career no hitters for number 16. And as uh, she's evidenced throughout this tournament, she's been firing the ball past everybody. She had 14 strikeouts against Connecticut, 13 against Northridge. Beautiful weather for this five-day tournament, and the fans enjoying it on the berms. Capacity here just above 2,000, but with the grass area, we've had crowds in excess of 5,000. Leah O'Brien, the batter for the Arizona Wildcats, one of the leaders here in RBIs in the College World Series with just three. Not many teams score a lot of runs because you face such great pitching. She needs to do her job here, though. Needs to drive something to perhaps the right center gap, and she's got one out there. Oh, and two to O'Brien. That's a base hit to center field. Here comes Shelvold and a good throw, but she beats the throw. In a way, could not apply the tag. A perfect throw by Evans, but the speed of Amy Shelvold gives Arizona a 1 0 lead. And on the throw, O'Brien goes to second. Randy, this is what I talked about, the power in the lineup. Leo O'Brien, one of the freshmen, Jenny Dalton, who will come up next, one of the freshmen, power to the Arizona lineup. And this is what she does. She gets a pitch she likes from Lisa Fernandez. She goes down low for the drop, brings it up, a sweet compact swing, and you've got Amy Shelvo not even stopping around third. And here's the play at the plate. In a way, couldn't get the ball and the tag around quick enough. Shellevold, a nice job of going to the back of the plate, avoiding the tag. Arizona has struck quickly here in the first inning. Still just one out. And O'Brien at second. The changeup is away. Fernandez has the best changeup in softball. She releases it out of the back of her hand, and we saw her unveil it several times against Oklahoma State yesterday, more than I've ever seen her throw it. She's trying. She knows that Arizona's starting to time her. The more a team starts to time her, the more Lisa Fernandez will throw that change. And Fernandez has to pitch very carefully to Jenny Dalton, who touched her up for a two-run homer in Tucson. And you can see that dugout, Arizona, very much alive, knowing they got an early run against Lisa Fernandez. Only the second run Lisa has allowed in the World Series in five appearances. Smart pitching by Lisa, trying to keep the ball low so Jenny Dalton can't drive anything. She did that to Leo O'Brien, but O'Brien went down on it. Also trying to get a play. Her infield is in, going to try and hold the runner at second. 3-0 to Jenny Dalton. And a free pass, and Dalton's aboard. Boy, this is a dangerous situation for Lisa Fernandez. She has one of the most powerful hitters, one of the most consistent seasoned veterans up at the plate for the Arizona Wildcats and Jody Miller Pruitt. Tracy, Lisa Fernandez pitched earlier today, beating Southwestern Louisiana. Pitched a great game, a one hitter, but is there fatigue creeping into her game. Randy, she's pitched every inning of every game for the UCLA Bruins, and she said she would go down fighting. Yeah, your heart says one thing, but sometimes your body says another. Kelly Inouye, who is a very close friend of Lisa Fernandez, the fine Bruin catcher, gonna walk the ball back to the circle and chat with her senior pitcher. Trying to say, what are we going to throw Jody Miller Pruitt? She has seven hits in this College World Series. She had the winning hit versus Oklahoma State. She's one of the leading hitters, and she's very knowledgeable up at the plate, so they're going to try and fool Jody Miller through with a lot of jump. Pruitt, seven for 15 in the series with two doubles. And also Kelly 
and Lisa Fernandez not getting perhaps the strikes that they may have gotten with another umpire. So they're probably rethinking the pitches they want to unveil right now. The corners are not being hit by Lisa Fernandez. Brewitt, the second all-time leading home run hitter at Arizona with 13. The all-time leader is Laura Espinoza. She has 18. She's sidelined today, available for pinch hitting duties with a bad back. That one moves inside. Two and one. More of that Arizona discipline, Randy. We've seen it now for the first six, five, first five batters that they're laying off the junk Lisa Fernandez is offering. They're making her come in with strikes. Two and one to Jody Pruitt, two on. One out and one in for Arizona. Obviously, Kelly's calling something Lisa doesn't want to throw. Lisa's taking a little longer to throw, a little cat and mouse game. It kind of throws off your rhythm as a batter. That one stays away, but it went over the outside part of the plate. Cats wanted a ball. It's called a strike, and it's two and two. Fernandez, great concentration. It always seems to come up with the right pitch. The changeup, and Pruitt got a piece of it. It remains two and two. A nice job of protecting the plate by Jody Miller Pruitt. Certainly was fooled on that, had her weight on her front foot. Lisa Fernandez has got to throw a strike, let the number one defense in the nation do its part. She's got to have the confidence that, hey, I don't have to do it all. <laughs> Blows down Pruitt. First strike out of the game for Lisa Fernandez. And, and a, a big K for Lisa. And a tremendous pitch by Lisa Fernandez. Came right up in Jody Miller Pruitt's eyes, and it looked very fat for Jody Miller Pruitt. As you see the ball, it rises. It starts out at your knees. It comes up higher. Tough pitch to hit. Looked fat for Jody Miller Pruitt. She liked it, but she's on the bench with a K. Susie Park, not just a pitcher. She has home run ability. She's hit three this year. Looks at a strike. Randy, we've seen so many times in this College World Series, Arizona strand runners on the bases. They've got two runners on now. It is this part of the lineup, the Pruitts, the Paras, that need to come through. Down the left field line, and it's chased and caught nicely by Jenny Brewster. But the Cats get on the board. They dent the scorebook against Lisa Fernandez. One hit, they leave two. We're through one. It's 1-0 one in Arizona. The Bruins have come back against Arizona before. They trailed Parra and the Wildcats 5-1, rallied to tie it, and went in an extra inning. And she kept it low there, and Christy Howard went after it. Christy Howard, the number four batter for UCLA, batted number six last year and number two. Never known for her power, but she is swinging more relaxed, more comfortable, and more consistent. So Sharon Backus and Sue Inquist decided to put her, the most consistent hitter, in the number four slot. There's Sharon Backus, her 18th season, over 700 wins and seven NCAA titles. Nice play by Parra in the circle, and she throws out Christy Howard. You have to feel that position well, don't you? And especially with the new ball, Randy, which we're going to talk about. The fluorescent yellow ball with a polyurethane center comes off the bat more quickly. Your reactions have to be flawless for Susie Parra and for the corners, Susie Duarte and Amy Shellevold. The ball was designed to add more offense, but it also keeps the defense on their toes a little bit more. Jenny Brewster, who hit the World Series winner last year off of Debbie Day of Arizona, it was a two-run blast, won the game 2-0 for UCLA. She has a, another two-run homer in this tournament, so she likes the Hall of Fame stadium, this fine sophomore. A little bit more consistent this year than last year. As a sophomore, having another good year. Has not really been hitting very well in this College World Series up until yesterday. Two for 17. She said she finally realized what she was doing wrong with her shoulder and her elbows, and she finally corrected that and seems to be hitting the ball a little bit better. A lot of it is confidence, too, Randy. Once you get that big hit, you got the confidence under your belt, and you feel, yeah, I can hit these All-American pitchers. 1-0 Arizona, second inning. Susie Parr, three wins in the series, 27 on the year. And the changeup. Fools Brewster and down she goes. 
Here is a look at the new ball for women's college softball. The first year in the championships of 1993. On the left, the new ball, the polyurethane center, more lively. It's got raised red seams. It's also got a sticky substance, more tackier substance, easier to grab for pitchers. What does it do for the offense? Adds a lot of life and about 20 points to the team's batting average. Susie Parr, very tough. Protecting a one nothing lead. Now most of the teams play with that ball during their regular season. They have the option of whether or not they want to play with it. Most of them do, but it is required in championship games. And we have seen more offense in this College World Series with the new ball. To right field and down the line, but that's where Lisa Geis was stationed. Deffen balls hitting the ball hard in this tournament, but Geis was in the right spot. And an inning and a half in the book, and Arizona leads one nothing. Division one NCAA Women's Softball Championship game. Lisa Fernandez, a strike to Lisa Geis. Fernandez, what a pitcher she's been. The two-time Honda Award winner. Lisa Geis, one of the few batters that will go from the right side of the plate. She's a senior, will play a lot of positions. Randy, we saw her at second last night. She's playing right field today, but she doesn't have that double threat of the slap. And she's one of three Wildcats that have played shortstop in the World Series. Guys, today we're seeing Jenny Dalton and earlier Laura Espinoza. But Espinoza's out with the bad back. Foul tip. Which we should mention because that is their leading RBI manufacturer in Laura Espinosa. She is on the bench, as you mentioned, with the bad back. But if push comes to shove, I don't know if Mike Andrea would bring her off the bench or not, but you sure got to miss her bat in this College World Series. And Geis has struck out for the sixth time on this classic two Ks for Lisa Fernando. And a nice job of framing that pitch by Kelly in a way. On the outside corner, Lisa Geis with two strikes has got to protect the plate. She didn't choke up, she didn't protect. And with someone with Lisa Fernandez's weapons, you've got to be on your toes with every pitch. Another quality slap hitter in Krista Gomez. They will play very tight specifically on the left side of the infield, knowing Krista's very fast, it can slap it to that side. And what you gotta do as a slapper is get your pitch and hit those holes, hit the pockets. You see the slapper, she's taking one, two steps, that second step will be on the front line of the batter's box. You will have made contact and be on your way to first base in less than three seconds. And that is one of the toughest pitches, is a change. As a slapper, Mike Andrea says, lay off a change. Unless you've got two strikes, your timing is all set for a regular speed pitch, so lay off the change because you're gonna be blowing by it anyway. She's throwing about 64, 65 when she throws the rise, a change up about 45 miles per hour. Which is still fast in some people's books. Now, Heather Compton was the fastest pitcher for UCLA this year. She threw upwards 68, 69. She got into a disagreement with the coaching staff and has been asked to turn in her uniform, hence Lisa Fernandez, the only starting pitcher for the UCLA Bruins. Heather Compton, of course, won it her freshman year here, the College World Series championship game against Fresno State. Fresno State was knocked out of the regionals this season. They've been a perennial power. It was Cal State Northridge that knocked them out. And Northridge was eliminated in this tournament by UCLA. Northridge was the number two ranked team in the country. Arizona number three. UCLA number one. Smart pitch by Lisa trying to go upstairs. I like Krista Gomez as a batter. She's just a freshman, she, but she's a fighter in there. She has several hits in this College World Series, has five with 14 at bats. She's a freshman. She played a little bit at second base on and off. She is playing today, but she's a fighter at the plate. Right back to Fernandez, and Gomez is retired. Two down, bottom of the second inning. Arizona's leading UCLA 1-0. As we can see, uh, the defense has cut off about 10 feet. Yes, the ball comes off the bat quicker, but in a slap situation, you know the batter is just trying to put the ball in play. You want to cut down the distance between yourself and the plate because you've got to pick it up flawlessly and throw to first, and I said, in about two and a half seconds. You can make a case for Stacy Redondo being the best number nine hitter in the country. She's come through in the World Series six for 13. 
scored a couple runs, has really gotten it going for Mike Candrea's squad in the tail end of the order. There's a one-handed bunt, but you couldn't time the change. And again, it's the change. I like Stacy Redundo, probably the most feisty player on this Arizona club. She's got so much power, she's got so much talent, and she's got a lot of heart. And we saw her make things happen. She's aggressive on the bases. And should she get on, she sets the table for the top of the lineup. Probably the best number nine hitter in the nation. Off of third base, and Brewster runs out of room. That was a smart decision by Brewster. She could have made a play had she dove, but it really wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth the risk of running into the fence there and the gravel which lines the outside of this field. Arizona's a team that on the year is hitting 332. They're also a squad that has 36 home runs. That's second in the nation. Cal State Northridge with 40, led the country. Redondo strikes out. Three Ks in the ball game for Fernandez. One, two, three, the Wildcat story. The Cats lead after two, one nothing. The Bruins facing Susie Parr, trying to break through in the third. And a base hit to left field for Joe Alchin. You know, Randy, I was just about to say, UCLA has hit Susie Parra hard, all for Jen Brewster, who struck out. They've been getting their bat on the ball. It was just a matter of time before they broke through. Hey, they're fourth in the nation in batting, batting at 328, so you knew it was a matter of time before they got to Susie Parra. What needs to happen? Parra needs to bear down, keep the ball low. The Arizona defense needs to tighten up now. Bruins had a terrific record again for Sharon Backus and co-coach Sue Enquist. 50 and four, they were 25 and one of the Pac-10. Sharon Backus, year in and year out, gets the job done. Looking for their eighth national championship. And this is Nicole Victoria, who can get the bunt down. She's batting out of the number eight spot, but is a good bunter. Parra either wants to throw her something up, so she'll pop it up or keep it low, make it difficult for her to bunt, as the corners cheat in. The bunt is down. DeWarty from third throws out Victoria, and the sacrifice is successful as Joe Alchins at second base. Nice effort there by Victoria, did perfect her, bunt. Did her job, but again, we saw Arizona was almost yes, slow coming no into that. Duarte made communication with Jody Pruitt, the catcher, and Amy Shellevold. Susie Parra got out of the way, as we're going to see. Victoria lays down the sack and then gets out of the way. Miller Pruitt, a nice job of getting out. She'll cover third, Duarte picks up and fires but they were almost a step low. They need to be hungry and aggressive there as Kelly Inouye steps up for the Bruins. Kelly Inouye does not have a good average, right around a buck and a half, but in the last couple of games of the World Series, she's starting to make contact and hit the ball hard. You know, they say paralysis from analysis, and Kelly is one who sits there and analyzes and analyzes and thinks and thinks and thinks. Hey, last year she had a great College World Series, made the all-College World Series partly because of her bat, and she threw a couple runners out. But she has just been struggling at the plate, kind of overthinking. She had a hit in last game, and she's starting to come around with the bat, as you mentioned, Randy. Two on to Kelly and Owen. 111, one RBI in the series. But she's had some clutch hits in this stadium. Runs right down the middle. And in fact, in 1989, in Inouye's freshman year, she had a double that scored two runs. That beat Oklahoma State two to one in the late inning. This is a key out for Susie Parr. She needs to sit Kelly in a way down, but here's they've got Kelly Howard, a volatile hitter, right behind her. That one's out of play. Rather have two outs with one runner on than one out with runners on first and second and Kelly Howard up. Susie Parr in a mild jam here in the top of the third inning, protecting a one nothing lead. UCLA has Joe Alchin at second base, waiting to be picked up, representing the tie and run. Smart pitch, trying to keep it low, low and inside. She'll use her in curve, her drop. Her drop she worked on over the summer, so she takes a shorter step. You know, she had to overcome bursitis in her pitching arm, was out about five games of the season. One of those games against UCLA, and she didn't throw. Three and two to Kelly Inouye. Got her. 
Second strikeout for Susie Parra. What a smart pitch. What a smart call by Jody Pruitt. What a smart pitch by Susie Parra going low and inside. And Kelly, in a way, very vulnerable, low and inside. Parra, great location. Miller Pruitt, a great job of picking the ball up. And that is a key out. Now you have two down with the runner on, and you've got Kelly Howard up, who's second on the team in hits. And a big question there, is that drop going to be called? There it was not called a strike. She's got to see what is going to be called by the umpire, not the drop or the curve, and stay low with it. Kelly Howard has been the table setter for the Bruin offense in that leadoff spot. An All-American in her first year in Westwood. And a nice job of watching two offerings by Susie Parra. When I said, Randy, I like her. She's only a freshman, the sister to Christy Howard, the shortstop, but she shows tremendous discipline and a compact swing at the plate. She's ahead on the count at 2-0. and oh. Two out, Alchin at second base. one nothing Arizona. And that one's away. Waiting on deck is Kathy Evans. The number two hitter in the lineup. And Para knows that Evans is a great slap hitter. She wants to try to get Kelly Howard. And this is part of the reason Kelly Howard is batting number one. She can hit for power, unlike Kathy yeah. Evans, who's the number two hitter. Well, Kelly's aboard. Runners at first and second. And Para will have to go after Evans. We may see a, a change here at the plate. Of course, Kathy Evans cannot hit for power. Sharon Backus is going to go with a batting change here and bring in a substitute, someone who can get the ball out of the infield. And that, of course, will be Jennifer Brundage, the second time Sharon Backus in this College World Series has made this type of substitution. Brundage has 23 RBIs on the season and one home run. She can hit the ball, put it in the outfield. Of course, with the re-entry rule, Kathy Evans undoubtedly will come back and play center field. That's a good point, though. Evans, the slap hitter. Brundage, the sophomore, more of a power hitter. She has a home run this year, nine doubles. So she has some spark in that bat, and Parra has to be very careful with her one nothing lead. But Parra comes in with the advantage that this is Jennifer Brundage's first time she's gonna see Parra. Again, she wants to keep it low. Starts her with a strike. Oh and one to Jennifer Brundage. And she did get her in curve up a little bit. It was a little low, not falling for a strike. Parra bought it up. Jody Miller Pruitt framed it very well and she's got she's ahead in the count right now. Brundage was the hitting star for UCLA in the regionals when they swept Cal State Fullerton. That rise ball got away from Parra. One and one. Susie Parra trying to pitch the Cats to their second NCAA championship. They won in 91. On the ground to Dalton, the shortstop. She throws out Brundage, and Parra's out of the jam. UCLA strands a couple runners. A good job by Susie Parra. Through two and a half. Arizona leads 1-0. Lisa Fernandez facing Susie Parra. This is a dangerous situation for Parra. Fernandez, the best hitter in the country. In the regular season, she hit 5-10. Which is an interesting point, Randy. She succeeded more times than she failed. Most batters, 300 hitters, they'll fail seven times, succeed three. Lisa, successful as she is here. Her sixth hit of the College World Series. She's six for 14. And I won't be surprised if Sharon Backus puts a pinch runner in for Lisa Fernandez. Fernandez goes so well to all parts of the field. And here gets an inside pitch, turns on it, does a nice job of rolling her top wrist over, her wrist over top of the ball, putting it on the ground, and they will bring a pinch runner in for Lisa Fernandez. Fleet-footed Nicole Anderson, outstanding point guard on the Bruin basketball team. She enters. And she represents an all-important run. This is going to be a true test for Susie Parr. Sharon Backus' lineup, this part, is loaded with hitters. You've got Christy Howard, Jen Brewster also up, and you've got a speedster on first. And here's where you have the luxury of the re-enter rule. You can take your pitcher off the base pass. She'll be rested, and uh, 
Duarte comes back out to pitch, she'll be better off for her effort. UCLA has one of the luxuries. Arizona does not. They have depth. They want to bring in a pinch hitter, they bring in Jennifer Brundage. They want to bring in a pinch runner, they bring in a pinch runner. Arizona does not have that luxury. They are short on people. You see Susie Parra, she's pitched every game and going to have to continue if they're going to win this World Series. Christy Howard looking to lay down the sacrifice. Duarte's going to second. It's an out. Anderson slid into the bag, but a nice effort by Jenny Dalton to hold on to the ball. A tremendous job. Here Duarte quick to get the ball. She thought it might be a slap. She lays it down, but watch the great glove. It keeps it in her glove, shows the umpire, sells it, and that is an out. Getting the lead runner, you've taken a quick runner off, and you've got Christy Howard not as quick on first base with one out. Good play by the Arizona defense. Bringing up the dangerous Jennifer Brewster. A home run this year in the tournament. And again, she hit the two-run blast to beat Arizona last year and win the championship for UCLA. But it was not against Susie Parra. It was against Debbie Day. So the theatrics that we saw last year were over a different Arizona pitcher. Susie Parra has her own score to settle. But again, another pitcher that likes it high and inside. Her home run this tournament was off of Melanie Roach of Oklahoma State. One and one to Brewster. Hit 304 as a freshman. Hitting 333 currently in her sophomore year. Shows the good eye. That curve was breaking outside, and she did not offer. Brewster is one of those batters that has slid up and down the UCLA lineup when Sharon Backus was looking for a four, five, six hitter. She's out of the number five down, uh, five now. She was she was down earlier though. On the ground to Duarte at third. Two and one. Right play by Duarte. Ball slow and getting to her. Brewster took a big swing, maybe caught Duarte on her heels, made the nice play, going to first. And now Parr has got another tough batter to face. Well, Janae Deffenbaugh stroke a home run to beat Southwestern Louisiana. That was an elimination game for the Bruins in this double elimination tournament. Had a key triple to knock Cal State Northridge out of the tourney as well. See Susie Parr throwing the drop. She's got an in curve and out curve, a rise, a change up. She worked on her rise and her drop over the summer. And against these UCLA Bruin ball clubs, she knows she's got to do her job. Mike Andrea says we're going to ride her into the title if we can. Back to Parr. She retires Deffenbaugh. The Bruins strand another runner in scoring position. For a three and a half, Susie Parr and the Wildcats are leading UCLA's Bruins 1-0. Susie Parr trying to help herself. Infield in for UCLA. Susie Parr has flown out several times to left field. She likes the high inside pitch. Now, Lisa Fernandez doesn't want to give Parra the power hitter anything she can drive to the outfield. She'd like to keep it low and on the ground. Parra needs to show some discipline there at the plate to wait for her pitch. Fernandez in this situation looking for the strikeout. This one's belted foul. Parra turned on it, but turned on it too much. And that dugout alive when they saw that ball fly off the bat of Susie Parra. <laughs> it's not often you see a team high five foul balls, but they did there. This is key though. Susie Parra isn't in the driver's seat. Lisa Fernandez is. Lisa is ahead in the count. It's 0-2. Now she can throw Parra junk and make her go fishing. If you're thinking, does Fernandez give up home runs? Not very often. One to Jenny Dalton of Arizona, one to Tamara Ivey of Cal State Northridge. The only two homers hit against her this year. And this ball's got to get through the infield. We don't have the quickest runner from Arizona on third. We've got Leo O'Brien, who you mentioned, Randy, has a bum ankle. She's not the quickest, so Parra needs to get it out. The change stayed high, but a good pitch at 0-2. 
And good control by Parr not to attack on it. A tremendous pitch by Lisa Fernandez. Good call, not in the strike zone, so it wasn't too good, but it had Parr thinking now about her timing. Change up, well thrown. Parr locked at the plate, strikes out. Four Ks for Fernandez, and that's the biggest one so far today. This is why Lisa Fernandez is, in my opinion, the best pitcher in the nation, because she mixes it up so well and has you second-guessing yourself as a batter. Your confidence is so low. It was 42 miles per hour. Now she may blow a 68-mile-per-hour pitcher pitch by you. It's up to Lisa Geis. A questionable move here by Mike Andrea. Would he b have bought Laura Espinosa off the bench, his leading RBI manufacturer who is without nursing a bum back in for Lisa Geis, who's been struggling this entire College World Series? Fernandez trailing on the count to Geis, 2-0. Uncharacteristic of Lisa, normally ahead of the count. Usually has these hitters off balance. And Lisa Geis is not really known as a hitter. Usually will slap it in, in the infield, hopefully force somebody into an error. Or she can show a lot of discipline at the plate and earn her way to first base. Takes a strike, it's two and one. Dalton, the only one to reach base out of the last 11, and they're trying to score. Two and two to Geis. Boy, that's a real delayed call. I think that does wonders for your psyche as a batter. You lay off, lay off, okay, it's a ball, and then you hear that strike go up behind you about two seconds later. Nearly a wild pitch, in a way, saved the run. I don't see Lisa Fernandez throw that many wild pitches, and I think the fatigue factor is, the fatigue factor is setting in as we see the ball almost get away from Kelly in a way. Does a tremendous job. She's got a great glove there for the UCLA Bruins. Has been catching Lisa for about 10 years. They've played together, so she kind of knows the movement of her pitches. 3-2 pitch to Geis. That's a foul ball. Geis had a key hit against UCLA in the 91 series, knocking in a run as the Cats beat the Bruins 1-0. Put them in the loser's bracket, in which they had to work their way back. Did not, though. It's Arizona 1 0. On one hop to Christy Howard. Retires Lisa Geis. Fernandez gets out of the inning. Dalton stranded at third, but Arizona is leading in this championship game 1 0. Arizona won it in 91. They'd like to do it again in 93. Brandy, you talk about bright stars, and all these people out here have an opportunity to look at future Olympians. Many of these girls, including Susie Parr, perhaps Jody Miller Pruitt, Lisa Fernandez, could very well be on the 1996 U.S. Olympic team, where softball will be an official sport this year in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, Susie Parr has already been named to the USA national team. This year, she'll go on later this year to the Netherlands and pitch for the U.S. The exciting part, these girls have a chance to represent their country like so many other medal sports. And now, with the ball, with the caliber of players like Lisa Fernandez and Susie Parra, we're going to, the sport is taking off, Randy, in the 90s. Joe Alchin, one for one. It's a confident Bruin team. They've broken through against Parra in the regular season. Again, UCLA defeated the Wildcats three out of the four meetings. But this is the one that counts for the championship. Lined right at second base. Alchin hit it on the button, but right to Krista Gomez. Joanne Alchin, who was a number four hitter last year for these UCLA Bruins, gets a nice shot of it, thinks it's in. Just kind of a little disappointed because every runner counts in this game. Every hit, every pitch counts in this College World Series when Arizona is just holding on to a 1-0 lead in the fifth inning. Nicole Victoria stands in. Looks at strike one. Victoria has a very quick bat, very aggressive player. She's a streaky hitter this year, as you notice. She keeps her hands high and kind of readies herself at the last second. 
This one's on the infield, and again, it's Krista Gomez, two away. And a nice pitch by Susie Parr, who sees the high hands. Many batters can't roll that top wrist over and will go underneath on a rise ball, exactly what Nicole Victoria did. This is a good inning for Susie Parr. She needs to get through the UCLA Bruin lineup very quickly because the last couple innings have been a struggle for her. Susie Parr sailing along with a two hitter. The rise ball and in a way was tardy. You see Kelly in a way she's getting down on herself after just one swing. You got to fight. You say hey that was one pitch. I'm going to be that much smarter for it and come back with an aggressive attitude. Kelly gets hungry at parts and you could see it in her batting performance when she's on. And she got smart after that pitch. She didn't bite for the second one. In a way three times all pack 10 the catcher who has done such a marvelous job of handling the Bruin pitchers and in particular Lisa Fernanda. Hey she gets another college World Series ring. She could have all four fingers filled up. Another pop up and again Goma says I got it on the outfield grass. Krista did all the work defensively. The Bruins are done in the fifth one two three Arizona six outs away from a national title. Arizona leading the Bruins of UCLA one nothing. We move into the bottom of the fifth inning. Krista Gomez and her teammates excited about having the lead. Well they know every pitch every hit counts and they're starting to, to time Lisa Fernandez pretty well. Krista Gomez a feisty batter has the infield in. Victoria gets Gomez. And had a little mind lapse there Krista Gomez didn't think the ball was fair watched it that's the last thing you do as a batter you should put the ball in play and you take off you wait for the umpire to make the call rather Gomez sat there wait for the umpire to make the call and then took off just witness the line on Fernandez only four strikeouts normally she's more overpowering than that Christy Howard the shortstop quickly guns down Stacy Redondo and you saw Howard take a little bit more time with that throw she composed herself got the ball followed through very nicely and that's the way I know she feels more comfortable about that throw than some she's had in this World Series and Redondo a key out you have to keep Amy Shellevold off the base pass she got out on the air and scored the only run of the game on the O'Brien single she pops up and Christy Howard takes this one in. And Lisa Fernandez is back in the dugout in a hurry. The Cats roll over in the fifth. After five, Arizona leads the Bruins 1-0. This is going to be a pivotal inning for Susie Parra. The Wildcats went down 1-2-3. UCLA has the top of their order up. Many who have seen now, this is the third time Susie Parra, she's got a bear down. Arizona's almost playing not to lose here. They've got to come out aggressive and take the bull by the horns. It starts with Susie Parra. Kelly Howard, an excellent first year, very capable. Again, these Bruins have rallied before. They've come from 5-1 down to beat Carter in the regular season. It's a that, good looking pitch. And one that and one. is Kelly Howard's pitch. I, I think she had second thoughts of that all the way. When you have second thoughts as a batter, when the ball's coming in that quickly from 43 feet, you don't swing, but as we take a look at the line on Susie Parra, but that was Kelly Howard's pitch. And Parra with only two strikeouts. She had 250 during the season coming into this championship game, and she too is a power pitcher. And she knows she's going to have to work against that young lady, Kelly Howard, because she's so disciplined at the plate. She's got to outthink her, make her go fishing for something, and keep the ball low. Off of third base and down the line Redondo gives chase but runs out of room. And I don't see Kelly Howard going for that many of those pitches. Usually does an uppercut and go to the opposite field. Usually is a pretty good swinger. Kind of went fishing for a bad pitch and now Parr has got two and two count on him. Kelly Howard twice the San Diego County Player of the Year at Monta Vista High School. Highly recruited and with her sister playing for the Bruins. 
It was almost a foregone conclusion that Sharon Backus would get her, and Parra strikes her out. Boy, that is a big, big out for Susie Parra. Not only do you get the leadoff hitter out, you get Kelly Howard out. A great, great pitch by Susie Parra, who goes upstairs, throws the rise. Kelly Howard just misses it completely. A great, great piece of work by Susie Parra and Jody Pruitt. It was the rise, but it was softly thrown at 56 miles an hour. She took something off. Here's Kathy Evans, the slap hitter. They want to get her aboard. She has great speed. Let her high, strike one to Evans. And you look at the Arizona Wildcat defense, which is in Kathy Evans, noted for either hitting to your third baseman, Duarte, or your shortstop, Dalton, and just booking it. So they'll bring them in to cut down the gaps, and they sneak in. Bunt down to third base, and Duarte in a strong throw gets Kathy Evans. Two away in the Bruins sixth. Another key out, and these Arizona Wildcats are gaining momentum with each out. It could very well stop here with Lisa Fernandez coming up, but two key outs, striking out Kelly Howard, the leadoff batter, and getting the speedster Kathy Evans to go to Susie Duarte. Do you pitch around Lisa Fernandez with a one nothing lead? Fernandez, the best hitter in the country. Randy, you don't give her anything good. You are an advocate of pitching around Lisa Fernandez. If you were the pitcher against Lisa Fernandez, she would walk every time up. Every single time, the intentional <laughs> walk. I just don't give her anything good. Lisa is known this year to be able to drive with power to the opposite field. Do you throw her low and away? I don't know. Don't throw her anything high. Try and keep it low and away. Try and keep it at her knees. 11 home runs. Tie in the school record set last year by Yvonne Gutierrez. Hit the 11th in this World Series off of Oklahoma State's Melanie Roach, and she hit it to the opposite field. Looking for one pitch to drive and try to tie up the ball again. Cara, nice job. She's not going to give her a strike, so Lisa, who leads the team in walks, will just sit there patiently if she does not get a good offering, but Parr doing a good job of keeping it low. Lisa, yeah. 32 walks during the regular season. Well, she has the green light. She gets anything to look at, she will offer. Boy, now that looked good, and it was called a delayed strike. She's got two and one, but that's exactly where you want to hit it, just about the knees. Now that average has come up during the regular season. It was 5'10". At one point, it reached a high water mark of 5'21". Three and one to Lisa Fernandez. Bruins batting in the top of the sixth. Wildcats one, UCLA nothing. And this is a familiar position for Christy Howard, the on-deck batter, who so many times has been forced into this position. Everybody respects Lisa Fernandez. Christy Howard, who's second on the team in RBIs in the regular season with 33, now has to make some good contact, try and put the ball in play, but she needs a good at bat here. Now remember, Sharon Beck has already substituted for Lisa Fernandez once in this game, so she's forced to deal with the speed or lack thereof of Lisa Fernandez. Bruins have Fernandez, the tying runner aboard. Two out in the sixth. First pitch to Christy Howard is ball one. Cara going low, low, hoping the umpire makes the call, but she's not putting it in for a strike. Got to bring it up just a little bit. And just did there. Popped up, and again, it's Christy Gomez, who's been busy. Retires Christy Howard. The Bruins lead Fernandez at first. Five and a half innings in the book. And Susie Parr and the Cats are leading 1-0. And welcome back to Oklahoma City's Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This is the Division I NCAA Women's Championship game. A couple old rivals, Arizona and UCLA. They meet every year in the Pac-10, and three years in a row now they've met in this championship game. And this is the rubber match, as you would say, Randy. In 91, Arizona won it. Last year, UCLA won it 2-0. And this year, Arizona's leading 1-0 in the sixth inning with the number two batter up in Jamie Hagan. Jamie Hagan, the all-time leading hitter for Arizona, career-wise, nearly 350. But against the tough pitchers, the likes of a Pat Conlon, who pitched in this tournament for Connecticut, Kyla Hall, who was terrific for Southwestern Louisiana, Kathy Blake of Cal State North, are some terrific throwers. It's tough to get those averages up come World Series time. You're talking about the leading ERAs in the nation. This lady, Lisa Fernandez, the number two ERA in the nation. 
Fernandez fields that position so well, guns down Hagan. I just don't see the hungriness in the Arizona batters. It's almost like they're content with their 1-0 leads. The designated player, number 20, Leah O'Brien. Mike Candrea, a man you're going to see perhaps with fear in his eyes, should he win this College World Series, he will shave his hair. He promised his girls, I will shave all my hair off if we win this year's College World Series. But will the mustache go? <laughs> How would you recognize him? The change is a strike to O'Brien. And that's a good pitch by Lisa Fernandez. Leo O'Brien is on Lisa Fernandez, so Lisa trying to mix up the speed. She may very well come back with another change. Had the big hit of the ball game to this point. Her single scored, Shellevold in the first inning. Shellevold got on via the air to Christy Howard at shortstop, and the Cats were able to bring her around on O'Brien's single. Fernandez pitching a one-hitter. O'Brien has the only hit. She pitched a one-hitter earlier today. You know, Randy, so many times we see the freshmen doing the work. Last year it was Jennifer Brewster with the two-run home run for UCLA when she was just a freshman that won the College World Series for the Bruins. This year it's O'Brien, a freshman. Bruins had to win a game today against Southwestern Louisiana, and it was Fernandez who threw the one-hitter to beat the Lady Cajuns. One's in the dirt. So Lisa Fernandez in this tournament with the two no hitters, one against Connecticut and Cal State Northridge, a one hitter against Southwestern Louisiana. She shut out Oklahoma State. She's given up the one hit to Arizona and the Wildcats with only the one hat are leading the ball game and they're exchanging high fives. <laughs> hey girls, there's a game going on. Turn around. And you, excited. And the fatigue factor comes in for Lisa Fernandez. Or it's question, is she fatigued having just pitched seven innings before this game? But here's the best player in the country. Shelly Howard throws out Leo O'Brien. Two away in the Wildcat sixth. And Lisa has so many pitches she can unveil that if something isn't working, she's not a power pitcher. She can just come back with something else. You know, she... When they did lose the game earlier in the College World Series to Oklahoma State 1-0, Lisa almost had tears in her eyes and says, we need to get the bats going. We need to have some offensive support. They've only scored 11 runs in five games in this College World Series. Really not coming through with the bats like they did last year. They last 10 year they scored 29 runs, only allowed one. Went through the field easily. I think that's one of the big differences between this year's team and last year's team. This year's team definitely led by Lisa Fernandez and her back. Last year's team had Yvonne Gutierrez, the Mickey Mantle, as Sharon Backus would like to call her, and some other power hitters, including Lisa Fernandez. This year, the pressure offensively has been on Fernandez for the entire season. Two out in the sixth inning, Jenny Dalton facing Lisa Fernandez, who's allowed only six hits in the tournament. But right now, she's down one nothing. That hard inside curve. Well, she's trying to keep things low and inside from Leo O'Brien. When she gave up the two-run home run, Lisa Fernandez, to Leo O'Brien during the regular season, it was a rise ball. Rather, that was Jenny Dalton that hit the, uh, the home run. It was a rise ball that she took over to left field. It was a tremendous hit. Dalton grounds this one to Victoria. An easy inning for Fernandez. Her job is done in the sixth. The Bruins need to rally. They have three outs available. Arizona bidding for the title. The Bruins want a repeat. Randy, when you consider that UCLA has won seven of ten national championships, and the last team to dethrone them was the Arizona Wildcats, it is phenomenal the Pac-10's reign over the title in women's college softball. But you need a near flawless game to beat the UCLA Bruin teams, which is what Arizona has done up until this point. They've still got three in eight, three batters, three very volatile batters to get by. Arizona the 91 champion. Ball one to Brewster. UCLA won it in 82, 84, 85. Then three in a row, 88 through 90. Arizona got the 91 title, and the Bruins took it back in 92. Boy, you think she's thinking about her heroics last year at all at the plate? 
The big cut. It's one and one to Brewster. Brewster, of course, a two-run home run last year to win the game, the College World Series for UCLA. Susie Parr, more and more deliberate as the game has gone on. Wants to make each pitch count. The rise ball is fouled off. One and two to Brewster. She got lucky with that pitch. She doesn't want to throw a rise ball or anything up in the air. And Brewster was on top of it. See if maybe Parra mixes it up and comes in with a change. Brewster is on the timing now of Susie Parra. What are the two hits? A two-run blast against Melanie Roach of Oklahoma State. And when she hit the homer, she pulled it to left, exhibiting great power. Strike three. Ooh, what, a, what a tough out for Susie Parra. Stone-faced as she is, that is a key, key out for her, and she is showing a lot of poise on the mound for the Arizona Wildcats. Watch the great location. She goes outside, goes away from Brewster, away from her power zone. Brewster not protecting the plate. A key, key out for Susie Parra and the Arizona Wildcats. The fine utility player, Janae Deffenbaugh. Ball one to Janae, and again, she has a home run in the tournament in the elimination game against Southwestern Louisiana. She went the other way. She hit it over the right field fence. Para needs two outs to give the Cats the national title. Randy, you can't say enough about the job Susie Parra has done up until this point. As I mentioned earlier, in three games that she's faced UCLA this year, she's let up nine runs, an average of three runs per game. She has not let up a run here. She's really benefited from her pitching, her selection, and Jody Miller Pruitt's calling behind the plate. She's gotten smaller, smarter as the season's worn on. Two and one to Duffin Ball. We're going to see an exciting College World Series next year, Randy. They're allowing 32 teams into the regional this year, just 20 as it has been in the past, but they're expanding it to 32 teams in women's college softball. Yeah, the World Series will be here for at least the next two years. This is the fourth year in a row that Oklahoma City, Oklahoma has been the host site. Two and two to Janae Deffenball. Deffenball looking for a pitch she can drive, just trying to set the table, trying to get on. Far trying to remind herself to stay focused and keep it low. Straight three, a swing and a miss. Para and the Cats are one out away from their second national title. And again, Parra cannot relax against Joanne Alchin, a former number four hitter last year in the UCLA lineup. She struggled a little bit with the high stuff and low and outside. She does have a single off of Parra today. The Cats are closing in on their second crown. Joe Alchin trying to keep things going for UCLA. Some anxious moments for those players. Wanting it so much. The four seniors on this Arizona Wildcat team would love to go home with a national championship, including Jody Miller Pruitt, the catcher. 2 and 0 oh to Alchin. The Bruins, they know they've rallied. They've come back before. They've been the dynamic team at women's softball for years. The changeup fools Alchin. Two and one. Barra has collected her thoughts and pitched very well in this game. She's more focused when the pressure is on. She likes the pressure. Alchin starting to bite at the low. That was a good pitch. Mix it up a little bit. And then he's called a strike, delayed as it is. Two and two to Alchin. Two out. Top of the seventh inning. Arizona leading UCLA. One nothing. Strike three. 
She strikes out the side, and Arizona is the champion. Arizona's Wildcats win the national title, taking it away from Lisa Fernandez and the UCLA Bruins.